cause of financial problems, crises in America, was that innovation outstripped the regulation. And at some point, there were new things going on with no rules. We could not obviously, in 2010, be confident about what those were. But we did create both the legal authority and the regulators and some structures to anticipate the new new developments. And I, that's very relevant to today because there there is both the power in the existing regulators and, and a couple of structures that we believe will be used. Uh, and, and this is the final lesson. Uh, in previous years, for example, when financial derivatives became very popular and very, very common, there were some in the Clinton administration who wanted to regulate them. But the dominant view at the time was that regulation kills innovation rather than refines it. And so there was a very fateful decision taken to do no regulation of derivatives. The result of that was the invention of credit default swaps where people in effect sold insurance without having any ability to pay it off and all of that. Um, there is now in the Congress, and I'm talking now about a political attitude, I'll finish with this. 30 years ago, the prevailing attitude was don't rush in, don't regulate these innovations because you'll kill them. Nobody, very few people think that today. There is a broad consensus in the Congress that these new elements, crypto, digital, whatever, that, that it requires regulation. Specific what kind is still debated, but I think the, the one major change is there is now a recognition that significant innovation calls for significant intelligent regulation, and that's, that's a new development. The problem as you come to regulation is that there is a, uh, a kind of a fractured regulatory, regulatory playing field. And um, we have uh, pieces of this could be done by the Federal Reserve, the Securities Exchange Commission, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the Office of the Control of the Currency, and the FDIC. And um, uh, I was asked, for instance, by Secretary Geithner why we didn't merge the Securities Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, which would be a very sensible thing to do. And uh, the answer is very simple. They have very different political constituencies. No, I mean, Geithner said, is it possible to do it? I said, logically, yes, but politically, no. Another example, um, there are two bank regulators, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which regulates everybody who has deposits, and then the control of the currency, and the control of the currency only regulates um, federally chartered institutions, not state chartered institutions. And then there's the Federal Reserve, which has a piece. And one logical thing was, why not have one regulator? And the answer was, the state chartered banks, which tend to be the smaller banks, said to their congressional representatives, we do not want to be under the same regulator as the big banks because they will favor their interests over ours. So that's, that's why, why that, uh, that happened and why it was kept separate. The biggest thing is the attitude change, which is, uh, as I said, 30 years ago, the general, the answer was, no, we're not going to regulate derivatives because they're such a wonderful new thing and regulation kills. That's not true today. Everybody says, okay, we've got to regulate this innovation. How do we do it? But there, there are two things that it's the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And that's important because one of the things that will motivate members of Congress going forward is consumer protection. The fear that people will get, lose money by investing in crypto and getting in over their heads. And the fact that there is an existing entity to protect consumers I think will, will be helpful. It, it's a set of guardrails that people will point to. The other is the uh, FSOC. That is the Financial Stability Oversight Council. It is a body, a statutorily created body 
of all of the financial regulators, the SEC, the FDIC, the CFTC, FDIC, Federal Reserve, et cetera, chaired by the Secretary of the Treasury. And their job is to talk about and formulate ideas about things that don't fit within one specific entity. And that's obviously what we're talking about here. This is, you have the siloing problem where one regulator deals with one set of problems and, and not the other. The purpose of the FSOC is to bring all the regulators together on a regular basis to identify problems that are not neatly covered by any one entity and to formulate more common policies. And it includes, they have the right, they don't have any initial statutory power, but they can, as a collective body, issue an instruction to any of the individual regulators saying either come up with something or explain why. But what we now have is a formal statutory forum for the discussion and, and proposed solution to those issues which, which are new and don't fall neatly in the old forms. And it's the subject of today is an example of that. I guess one of the issues, the big issue is regulation falls into different, um, there were different kinds. I think in the next Congress, you will see uh, Maxine Waters, the chair of the, the Financial Service Committee in the House, had already drafted a, uh, a bill. Th that's a bill to define stablecoin, which would then allow banks to deal with them more. The, the notion is that you, you don't want banks dealing with lending, taking deposits in stable coins, unless it's clearly defined that it's stable. And that one falls solely within the financial committees. So you have one set of regulations, I believe, defining both what makes you a stable coin and what banks can then do with it. The next one is where the Federal Reserve obviously takes the lead, and that's the notion of a central bank digital currency. Uh, and that again, uh, but that, that one will involve two sets of committees. It will involve the financial committees, but also the taxing committees. Uh, my guess is the the tax committees in the Senate and House will, will they have been very powerful will have a role and then there's the uh, there's the question of uh, uh, digital currency as a as an investment and as a commodity and that will involve a kind of shared jurisdiction between the Securities Exchange Commission which regulates securities and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission which represents, which rec regulates derivatives, financial uh, commodities. And that's the one where there's been the greatest conflict. When, when we started dealing with our legislation, uh, there was a serious question. I mean, when I was, derivatives originally were mostly over physical things. And then financial derivatives came up and one argument could have been they should have been more by the Securities Commission, but they stayed with the Commodities Futures Commission. That also means, by the way, that these committees on agriculture get involved because they control, they have jurisdiction over the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. Now, one of the original questions was we had to decide how we were going to decide what the Securities and Exchange Commission regulated and what the Commodity Futures Trading Commission regulated. My initial suggestion was that the CFTC get anything edible and the SEC get not. It didn't quite work out. But that will be the major jurisdictional issue when it comes to the regulation of digital currency, coins, et cetera, um, as, as, not as a currency, but as a, uh, a commodity, as an entity, as an investment, there'll be a fight about that. One is what, what banks can do with regard to banking business with digital currency. That's going to depend on the agreed upon definition of a stable coin and what you can do with them. There will also then be what about digital currency as currency? And then there's an intermediate, which is 
Um, well, it goes into part of what the banks can do. Uh, can the banks allow their own customers to trade with each other in digital currency within the bank? Uh, I, I don't see one bill doing all of those. Certainly the, uh, the question of a central bank digital currency and the definition of use of stablecoins are going to be very separate. 